Let's get reaction to that from Steve Forbes, Forbes Media Editor-in-Chief and Fox News contributor Carl Rove. Steve, to you first, your reaction. I say it was a turning point for the president, and you say what? Uh, Ronald Reagan and Winston Churchill would have been impressed with that speech, Stuart. He was strong, Ooh. commanding, generous, optimistic, and by contrast, the Democrats came across as constipated sourpusses. It was, a, it was a vivid contrast and a one that highlighted the positive message of the president's speech. Now, Karl Rove, you're not exactly a major Trump supporter. Do you see it the same way as I do, that it was a turning point for the presidency? Uh, -oh. uh I think we have a problem with the audio. Very there. upbeat. Uh, ah, here we uh, go. I got you. I got you. Start again, uh, uh, Carl, because we missed the first part of your statement. Well, I said that uh, I thought I agree with you and, and Steve that this was a very good speech. Optimistic, upbeat, focused on an agenda. The, the stories uh, that he told about the people sitting with his wife in the box were terrific. Uh, and uh, I, I, thought, I thought also those, the, the point that both of you have made that the contrast with the Democrats was enormously powerful. Uh, I, I know Steve was using a formal term, sour pusses, but I think it's absolutely uh, accurate. Uh, they, they, the visual was bad. Now, here's the point, though. A speech alone is not going to reset it. It's what happens in the weeks and months that follow that matter. There's going to be a piece in the Wall Street Journal tomorrow. I've gotten an advanced look at it. It's really insightful, I think well-written. Uh, it makes the points of what needs to be done. I think I've done a pretty good job on it so far myself. Uh, but uh, th th it's what happens in the days and weeks that follows by the administration that matters on whether or not it's a real reset and whether this does help the president's numbers rise not for a week or two, but rise for months. Okay, hold on a second, Carl. Back to you, Steve. What do you make of the Democrats' response as a political strategy? Not what you thought of the response, but from their point of view, are they doing the right thing with this resist everything? Uh, the answer is no, but they're all fearful of the base of their party, which becomes more and more extreme leftists. They're all fearful of primaries this year. They fear that even more than general elections, and that's why they get pushed further and further to the left. You see with Cory Booker, senator from New Jersey, once a very good, impressive moderate, now is going on in the fringe on the far left because he wants to run for president. Mm. So politically, they're making a mistake, and if the president lets them be in the headlines, that is going to hurt the Democratic Party because they have nothing to stand for other than the fact they don't like Donald Trump. Carl, are they boxed into a corner, the Democrats? Yeah. The, the, you know, if they were smart, they'd stop being the resistance and offer an agenda so they become the alternative. But last night, so there was one shot, camera shot, where the president was talking, I believe it was about uh, standing for the Pledge of Allegiance, and Joe Manchin attempted to stand and then realized he was the only guy on the Democratic side <laughs> trying to stand and sat down. And he's in a state that Donald Trump won by 42 points. Mm -hmm. How comfortable do you think he is in this sort of left-wing orthodoxy that has now gained dominance over the Democratic congressional you're, party? You're right, Carl. You know, it's not just policy and strategy. It's the visual. That was a right. TV event Powerful. last night. And that's the big deal here, the visual effect. And, yeah, and Nancy Pelosi, she looked like she was really irritated all evening. It wasn't just sour. She was irritated. And Americans, this is the one moment where Americans do want optimism and they do want unity. I thought uh, Durbin's comments that uh, Chris Dialwald shared with you earlier in the morning were absolutely on target. That was the message the Democrats should have visually displayed. We want to work with you. We're going to try and be reasonable. We hope you will meet us halfway. We're going to sit down and see if we can't work our way through on these things. But instead, it came across as obstructionism, negativity. We ain't going to do anything with you. And it wasn't very attractive to the American people. All right, Carl, I do promise to read your article in the Wall Street Journal tomorrow, and that's a fact. Thank you, Stuart. I, my, my day has been made. Okay, you're your right. promise <laughs> made on television has made my day. All right, get out of here, Carl. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you very much, Carl Rose. You're a good man. Thank you. Yeah. Let me get back to money, because the Dow Industrials are up 140 points. They've lost uh, a chunk of the gain that they had earlier. We were up 240, 250. Now we're up 140. 26.2 is where we are. Steve Forbes, still with me. Much of that gain, 140 points, is accounted for by one stock. That's Boeing. Now, you take Boeing out, and we don't have much of a bounce back, do we? Uh, the key thing is the follow-through. And if uh, the White House makes it clear, Treasury Department makes it clear in the days ahead, 
that after the next year, these elections this year, they're going to go for another tax cut. That would be good. And the other two things they got to be very careful of. One is trade. It's one thing to renegotiate NAFTA, quite another to blow it up. That's a fear out there. The other thing is the wobbly state of the dollar. We saw with Jimmy Carter, Richard Nixon, and George Bush what happens when you have a weak dollar. So they've got to, Mnuchin's really got to stop talking down the dollar. We want a stable dollar. If well, they get it right on trade and the dollar, he his economy is going to roar. Stephen Mnuchin was on the show this morning at 9 o'clock Eastern time, and he said, look, I was misquoted about the dollar. Uh, you guys, you, you, you media people really <laughs> mess me up, and that's a, that's a fact. But uh, President Trump, he wants $1.5 trillion worth of infrastructure spending over 10 years. 200 billion coming from taxpayer money, the rest leveraged, I guess, from private enterprise. Is that a plan that's going to fly? Is that kind of workable? It's workable. You've seen states that do some uh, what they call privatization, get some competition in there, and those roads are better. You look at the railroad system in this country, freight road. It's the best in the world. Why? Because it's run by the private sector. Government ran it, it would be a mess today. So, yes, it can work. And the key thing is what the president said last night, Stuart, about getting away these crazy obstacles that make take 10 years what you can do in two or one years. That's a big deal. That's a Get huge deal. Get rid of that red tape, please. And, and if he yeah. puts that out there and just a couple of states start to do it, it's going to have a, a very positive ripple effect.